Welcome to this tutorial on generative AI tools and their uses and limitations from the University of Reading study advice team. This tutorial is designed for you to go through at your own pace and you can pause it at any time. Generative AI tools or gates are rapidly becoming a household technology with their use on the increase in domestic, business and academic settings. But what exactly are gates and how do they work? Well, firstly, they've actually been around for a lot longer than you may have first thought. Common technologies such as GPS navigation systems, autocomplete or predictive text, and automated video transcripts all use variants of current generative AI technology. So what is the current underlying technology of generative AI? Well, that would be Large Language Models, or LLMs. LLMs are trained with big data, vast amounts of text sourced from books, articles, websites, and other text-based sources that can be found online. Using this as training data, LLMs identify the patterns of words and how they are being used, recording particularly which words occur next to each other and in what frequency. From this, probabilities are calculated and used to produce new combinations of text, guessing the next likely element in a sentence, resulting in human-like speech. Every time a chatbot or other LLM-based technology receives positive feedback to one of these generated text sets, it increases the chance of similar responses in future interactions. As well as text generation, similar tools can also produce audio and or visual outputs trained using similar methods and principles as LLMs. A key thing to take away here, if you're considering large language model based technology in your studies, is that generative AI tools work with best guesses, not logical thinking. So if we're going to be using LLM technology in our studies, we must check their outputs against verified sources. With all this in mind, what ways could we see gates being used in our day-to-day -day work? You may have encountered recent additions of generative AI features in your day-to-day -day use of the internet and common technology. For example, you may have started to notice automated customer service chatbots on various websites, or apps like Grammarly and Bing Chat incorporating generative AI technology. You may have used AI companion apps such as ChatGPT, Bing Chat, Bard or Claude, which all respond to conversation-like prompts by providing human-like outputs. There's also image making technology, generating new images based on, on existing images available online. There's also voice recognition technology, which is a type of technology being incorporated among other places in disability assistive software or being incorporated as an accessibility option. There are also applications in academic research. In academic settings, generative AI brings the promise of sifting through vast amounts of data with maximized time efficiency. For example, sophisticated tools harnessing the generative AI predictive capabilities are being developed in scientific fields such as biotechnology for the production of new compounds. With all of these possible options available to us, we must take serious consideration of the all too real limitations and risks that exist when using generative AI tools in our study and what we can do to reduce them. A significant factor to always be considered is that of trust and verifiable information being used in our work. Firstly, generative AI tools are known to produce inaccurate or false information. As gates work statistically one letter or word at a time, they can produce false or incorrect information in a very factual tone. This is referred to as hallucination. Because of this, we must always verify AI outputs by independently checking other reliable and verified sources. This brings us neatly to the next point of unidentifiable sources. Most common LLM chatbots such as ChatGPT don't list their evidence or sources for their responses and are drawing on and combining content that they have encountered before from anywhere in their training dataset, regardless of contextual relevance. 
This in turn raises another issue. If we can't reference or credit the author of these sources, how can we assess the quality of or challenge the evidence used? In addition to issues of sourcing, we also need to consider data bias and misrepresentation. Whilst the idea of artificial intelligence gives the impression of neutrality, we cannot consider the output of generative AI tools as purely neutral. Their algorithms tend to reproduce the classifications, assumptions and biases that exist within their training dataset. As a result, minority voices and perspectives are very likely to be underrepresented in gate outputs, obscuring real world diversity. As such, over-reliance on generative AI tools may hold us back from reaching nuanced understandings of complex problems. There are also issues of misalignment, as in some cases, the prompt or intent of the user is not followed to the letter, or different outputs from the same prompt may diverge significantly from one another as the tool generates a new response. Due to this unreliability and inconsistency of generative AI tools, it is ultimately up to us to use our knowledge and apply our judgment to decide whether the outputs are appropriate. As with any academic work or investigation we make, we have to be mindful of the ethics of our process, and with the use of generative AI tools comes their own ethical considerations to be reckoned with. Copyright issues have been raised around the rights of individuals and creators whose products of expression were used to train the generative AI models. These authors, artists and designers are uncredited and unpaid. How much of your internet footprint do you think may have ended up in training ChatGPT? Currently, the ethics of data use for AI training remain contested. Who is the author or creator of a gate response? AI-generated outputs have raised questions about authorship and new potential areas of plagiarism. In the context of studying for a higher education degree, work submitted to demonstrate knowledge and skill must be one's own. Any use of generative AI for assessment purposes must comply with institutional rules. Generative AI tools are being scrutinised with regards to privacy issues and data protection laws. This is because there is no way to predict which information they may disclose. We must bear in mind that we don't have any control over what happens to any information we provide to generative AI tools like ChatGPT. So be careful with what you share and protect your personal information. AI models are trained on existing text or images online. Like any algorithm, they are likely to repeat predominant patterns in their training dataset. They may, therefore, reproduce biased ideas that have prolific presence online, such as misogyny, racism, homophobia or xenophobia. In order to develop and maintain these tools, there is a significant cost in energy and computing resources. The justification of the infrastructure cost for the operation of these AI systems is being questioned in view of other priorities, for example, global energy needs and the climate crisis. There are questions about who is accessing these AI systems and where, who will have access in the future, and who will benefit most from their development and use. For example, there are already subscription-based products with advanced features compared to their open access alternatives. We should also keep in mind the effect that AI tools may have on our own cognitive ability to learn or be critical and the impact they may have on our own behaviours in our study. Firstly, in terms of our own learning, gates are set up to provide easy answers. If we become over-reliant on these tools, then we may cause a negative impact on our ability to conduct independent research or how to learn via discovery, which are both vital skills for personal and academic development in higher education. Following on from this, we should also consider our agency and critical thinking in using generative AI tools, as when generating the responses to our prompts, they will automate tasks for us that should require our own critical judgment, such as selection of sources. In doing so, this can reduce or limit our own agency over our work, as well as our critical ability to evaluate options and make responsible choices. Another element to consider is the pace of change of generative AI technology. 
Advancements in generative AI tools are extremely rapid and LLM technology by its own nature is constantly updating and adapting. This can make it a challenge to develop confidence in understanding gates or be fully up to date in our ability to use them. Additionally, we must also consider the time cost of using these tools. It may seem like the whole purpose of using gates is to save time. However, using them can involve a lot of trial and error to find the best prompt or to get the output that is most useful for our work possibly taking more time than using traditional research methods. And last, but by no means least, we must take good care of our own safety when using generative AI tools. We are ultimately held accountable for the work that we produce and submit for assessment. And as such, machines cannot be held accountable. Whilst we should never submit outright generated content as our own for submission, if the information we have used in our work from a gate is misleading or outright wrong, all legal liability and accountability will still remain with the user of that gate output. As such, we must always verify the content of any gate output before we use it to make decisions or influence others. Another element we need to consider about the reality of generative AI tools is the existence of fraud. AI generated deepfakes and bots impersonating humans for fraudulent reasons have become an unfortunate increasing reality. Because of this, we need to be aware of the risk of being misled and must always make the extra effort to assess the reliability of online sources. This may come across as negative, but think of it as protecting your agency and the personal contributions you can make with your assignment. The control over the decisions you make in your work is important. And whilst generative AI tools can help us with these choices, ultimately the privilege of that control rests with you.